Okay guys, so it is finally time for me to upgrade my trusty test platform. So I'll take this episode to sort of spend some time talking about what I used to be using versus what I will be using now. So I'm just going to sort of yak at you guys while I disassemble this. So I've actually had a lot of people ask me about my test bench here. It is a high speed PC tech station. Just so you guys know, you can buy them from NCIX or a variety of other places. So I'm taking off my graphics card here. You can see the motherboard I was using before was actually an ASUS P7P55DE premium motherboard. So that is a P55 board. I had been questioned a lot of times also about my use of a P55 board, even in dual graphics card testing. And I can tell you guys with much confidence that in my experience, dual 8x graphics slots does not adversely affect performance versus using two 16x slots. So I will be upgrading my platform from a P55 one with an 875K and four gigs of RAM to a P67 platform. And this is going to be with a Core i7 2600K. So that is an unlocked hyper-threading enabled processor on an MSI P67 motherboard. Now P67 has some similarities and it has some differences when you compare it against the old P55 platform. So let's start with the similarities. Similarities is that it has uh, support for quad core sockets or quad core CPUs. So just like P55, P67 has no six core processors enabled for the platform at launch. And P55 will never be getting any six cores. Six cores are going to be exclusively the domain of 1366 and then future sockets from Intel. Another similarity that I mentioned before is that they both have dual 8x graphics support and no support for dual 16x. Now you will have some motherboard manufacturers that are releasing boards with an NF200 chip or uh, some other kind of workaround in order to enable two 16x slots. But I mean whether or not it actually adds any bandwidth to the system is pretty debatable, I would say. Okay, so I'm just taking off my, uh, my back plate here. Now this is something that I wanted to mention. You know, I'll probably do a separate video about this concept, uh, but the mounting sockets, the mounting holes for LGA 1156 and LGA 1155 are identical. So I've actually taken my LGA 1156 cooler and I've thrown it right onto my LGA 1155 motherboard just like that. So that's all I had to do. Now I can take that, throw it on my test platform, and I have upgraded to the 2600K. Now one of the things I'm going to have to do is see what kind of an overclock I can get out of my 2600K here. And that is what I will, oh, look at that, that was close. And that is what I will be using to give you guys performance results whenever I do any graphics card testing or anything like that. So this is a bit of a quick and dirty uh, motherboard swap. So I'm just gonna use some TP, clean off the CPU, use some TP, clean off my heatsink over here. This is a heat pipe direct touch heat sink, so I'm actually gonna use quite a bit more thermal compound than I normally would because there are these large grooves that thermal compound can settle into. So if you have a flat bottomed heat sink, you wouldn't wanna use quite as much, camera the camera's in my way. <laughs> you wouldn't wanna use quite as much thermal grease as I'm about to use. So there, we're gonna call that clean enough. Like I said, this is not necessarily the correct procedure for any of the things that I'm doing, but this is kind of when I need to get things done in a hurry and I'm on camera. So that is like gobs more than I would normally use. All right, so we go ahead and throw the heat sink on there. There we are. Then I have my little washers. So in terms of memory, we haven't actually seen any changes from that previous platform, LGA 1156, to the new one. So I'll be using my same Kingston DDR3-2133 modules. These are their HyperX H20 modules. These are, oh, sorry, pardon me, DDR3-2000. So these are high performance modules, whether you're running them with the water cooling that they do support or whether you're not bothering. Doesn't really matter, they'll still perform really well and I'm just gonna carry those right over to the new platform. I'm gonna be carrying over my old power supply. 
So that was uh, that's a Cougar 80 plus silver power supply with the funky snake looking wiring. Okay, we have our heatsink installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the CPU fan header. Noctua fans are not PWM enabled, but that's okay because they're quiet anyway. So I'll throw that on there, and then I'm using my noise dampening mounts here to plug in here and here. In case you guys are ever wondering how to mount a fan using these uh, noise dampening rubber mounts, this is how to do it. Just position them in place, then pull them all through, and then your fan will not make any vibration noises against the heatsink. I think they're great. I remember when they first came came out, it was like amazing. It's like, wow, we have a way to mount fans. It doesn't involve like bolting them directly to things so that it's noisy. Now, like LGA 1156, you have to make sure that you install the memory in the first slots. So ugh, I'm actually guessing on this board right now because I haven't used this board yet, although it's labeled one, two, three, four. That doesn't seem right because typically what I've seen in the past can you see those labels there? Yeah, there you go. Typically what I've seen in the past is that the primary slots tend to be the two that are a little bit further away from the motherboard socket, or from the CPU socket, in order to enable the use of uh, larger coolers that overhang tall memory modules, although it looks like we're not gonna run into any problems with this configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, so if it doesn't post, I'll know what to try right away and I will take those modules and I'll move them over to the next slots over. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my four pin CPU connector over here. So that's uh, one thing that hasn't changed at all. 24 pin, four pin, that's all fine. You can see at the back we have some, uh, some new slots. So instead of running only two USB 3.0 ports on the back panel, we actually have two on the back panel and two on an internal header. So that's one change that will be made to my test platform here. I'm also going to be changing the way I plug in my SATA cable for my DVD drive apparently, because this isn't gonna reach to where I had it plugged in before. So we've actually, that's another thing that's changed. We've got two SATA six gigabit per second ports, or rather two banks, four SATA six gigabit per second ports, and four SATA three gigabit per second ports. So I'm plugging that into a SATA three gigabit per second port on there. And uh, actually here, why don't we plug in, uh, here, I found another video card. We're gonna plug in a GTX 580. So I had a uh, 460 on there before, but we're gonna go ahead and throw the highest performance graphics card I have on hand onto the test platform for my upgrade. And from now on, all the results I provide to you guys will be using the LGA 1155 Sandy Bridge platform versus the older LGA 1156 Linfield platform. So find out what kind of an overclock I can get. I'll let you guys know and then we will go from there. So my upgrade is complete. That is how we do a motherboard swap in however many minutes or less. There's our old board.